Good morning, Pepster family. Happy Sabbath, and welcome to another week of our mini Pepster at your place, where our hope is that you are joining us from your home group, life group, small group, Sabbath school group, whatever group it is. Um, and if not, hey, we're still grateful that you've chosen to join us today. Today is week five of our sermon series, New Year, New You. And uh, today we have Karen, who is going to be bringing us the word for today. And so in a moment, she's going to be sharing with us the message. But before we get into that, I want to remind uh, all of our Pepster family that today and every Sabbath, we have the opportunity to give. And although I realize that, you know, during this season, uh, many of us are struggling financially, um, we don't want this to be a burden for many of us. But I want to remind you that, you know, giving is really an act of worship. And for so many of us, we know that we can worship God through our singing, our music, our life, our actions, our words. But giving also is a way that we can worship God. And if you are willing to worship God through your giving this Sabbath, uh, the ways that you can do that are going to be on the screen. And we are so, so grateful for your mind-blowing generosity. Well, I don't know about you, but I am ready to hear the word for today. So wherever you are, uh, let's open our hearts, let's open our minds to what God is going to speak to us through Karen today. Let's go. Good morning, Papster. I can't believe that we are already up to week five of our first series for 2022. We have been looking at how we can grow ourselves to be the very best version of ourselves, the version that God intended for us. We have looked at the importance of re-evaluating or owning the part of our story that we are responsible for. We've looked at how we are called to rethink not just to be cardboard cutouts, but to actually think through our decisions. William talked us through what it looks like to redefine what really matters in our lives. And just last week, Victor talked to us about reconnection. That is so vital. And especially in this season that we are in where there has been so much disconnection and so much isolation. And today I get to introduce the next step in our journey to becoming our best self, and that is to resource. A resource is anything that is available to us. It's anything that is in our environment that helps to meet either our need or other people's wants or needs. A resource can be money, it can be time, it represents our talents or the things that we are good at. Interestingly, we only talk about a resource as being something positive in our life or something that we can use to bless ourselves or to bless others. We think of it as the overflow of something that we have, that we possess, but each one of us also has deficit resources that are available to us. A deficit resource is often birthed from a painful experience in our lives, an experience we'd rather not have experienced. But because we have lived through that, it equips us with knowledge or understanding, wisdom and empathy. And we can either take our difficult experience and we can let that make us bitter and resentful and miserable, or we can allow God to turn that experience into something that grows us, into something that makes us better and stronger. And if we do that, if we allow God to do that, it means that we can use that experience to help others who may be on a similar journey in the future. How we use any resource that is available to us actually reveals a whole lot about us. When I think about this topic, 
I often think of this quote, don't tell me where your priorities are. Show me where you spend your time, money, and energy, and I'll tell you what they are. Or this one, show me where you spend your time, money, and energy, and I'll tell you what you worship. How we use our resources really does matter. But so often we don't plan how we're going to use our time, money, talent, or experiences. We just let life take over and dictate to us how we should use them. But it's important to take the reins back with this. We need to look at the resources that we have available to us right now. Because in every season of our life, the resources that are available to us can change. Often what we had in our 20s, we may not actually possess in our 40s and vice versa. But there's always something that we possess that we can use. And it's really important to make a plan of how we will use our resources to grow us, but most importantly, to bless other people. You know, I believe that there is a core value that is at the heart of how we use our resources. And that's the value of generosity. If we can get this value, the value of generosity deep down in our hearts, we will see the benefit of that far into our future. Because generosity changes everything. Our lives were made to be generous and we serve an incredibly generous God. But so often we go through seasons where we allow the limitations of our circumstances to shrink the capacity for generosity inside us. And it's a lie of the enemy that the circumstances around us should somehow change the generosity inside us. But as Christ followers, we are challenged to live by what we know. And we know that our God is generous. He is our provider and he calls us to be conduits of his incredibly generous heart. God is both our supply and our source. I really love this verse that's found in the message version of Proverbs 11 and verse 24. It says this, the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. We see this in so many stories in the Bible, stories of people using their resource, whether it's a deficit resource like Joseph after being sold into slavery, or the widow giving her last mite, or the use of surplus resources, like in the building of the tabernacle in the Old Testament, or of Peter and Paul in the New Testament, and how they share their passion for God's word all around the then known world. In 1 Kings 17, we read about a widow who has nothing left, and she's actually getting ready to die, it says. And God sends her the prophet Elijah. And he asks her for the food that is about to be her very last meal. And this widow has to ask herself what she believes. Is this food her source and her supply or is God? And in the end, she trusts in who her God has promised her he will be. And that he will continue to supply all that she needs. I love these words in the message version of Luke 12 in verses 29 to 34. It says, what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. Don't be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over things. But you know God, you know how he works. 
steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, and God provisions. You will find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. So be generous. Give to the poor. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place where you will most want to be and the place you end up being. You know, I'm really grateful to be a part of a faith community where I see this lived out in so many ways. In the way that you give generously of your time, your gifting and your money. I'm grateful for the ways that you give out of the overflow in your life and out of the deficit in your life as well. Thank you for how you care for people, for how you give to people, for how you resource others so that they can learn to begin to do this as well. Where does your heart want to be in church? Because this question is critical in unlocking our hearts and our hands to become conduits of greater generosity and how we use the resources given to us in this season. God wants us to find the place where our resource is stuck, maybe, and begin to unpack it. Because sometimes we are generous with some resources, but not so much with other resources. So this week, let's begin to explore and plan how we can maybe release what is stuck and use it to grow his kingdom, to reveal his love and his character to a world that so desperately needs him. What is in your hand in this season? And how will you reveal God by using it? Thank you so much, Karen, for bringing us the word for today and really challenging us uh, to think about how we use our resources. Uh, right now, in your life groups, you're going to go through some questions and really flesh out and, and, and talk about um, how you use your resources. And so uh, if you need them, the questions are going to be on the screen. We're looking forward to um, really what God is going to speak to each and every one of us as we discuss this in our groups. Have an awesome time, and we look forward to seeing you next week for our mini paps that you'll face.